This video is following on from the last two videos where we've got a river with a flow rate of 3.36 meters cubed per second. The river's three meters wide and the initial flow depth is 1.9 meters. In the first video, we looked at what would happen if we put a small bump in that river, a small bump of 0.3 meters. In the last video, we looked at um, a larger bump of 1.1 meters. And now we're going to look at what happens if we have an even larger obstruction that's now 1.6 meters high. So a significant portion of the initial flow depth is now being obstructed in our, in our river. So the starting point, as always, is to work out what our initial level of specific energy is. So our initial flow depth is 1.9 meters. If we follow that across and plot it onto the graph, so we draw a line from our flow depth of 1.9 meters. We look for the point where that intersects the profile and then draw a line down. We can see that our specific energy level, like the last two examples, is gonna be just above 1.9 meters. So I'm gonna round that down and say that our specific energy at point number one is 1.9 meters. So specific energy at one is 1 1.9 meters. So what we want to work out next is what the specific energy at point number two is. So what is the specific energy above this obstruction in the flow? And what we've said in the last two videos is that the specific energy at two is going to be the specific energy at one minus the energy lost due to this change in elevation. So specific energy is energy just in the flow. It's energy relative to the base of the flow. So at point number one, we're going to have more specific energy than point number two because at point number two some portion of our flow has had its energy translated into potential energy by this obstruction. So we now have everything we need to do that calculation. The specific energy at one is 1.9 meters. The height of the obstruction is 1.6 meters. So that gives us a new specific energy of 0.3 meters. So what we can do is plot that onto the graph and see what our new flow depth would be. So if we go over to the graph and we plot our new specific energy level of 0.3 meters, we can then work out our, our new depth. So we're gonna draw a line up from 0.3 meters. And what we've done here is we've offset the energy level by the energy we've lost to this obstruction. So this delta Z here is equal to 1.6 meters. And it's corresponding to a specific energy level of 0.3, which is our initial specific energy minus that 1.6. But if we look at this graph, we can see that we've now actually got a problem because the minimum possible specific energy the flow can have is at this level here. It's 0.8 meters. So we're actually, trying to force our specific energy below the minimum level, which can't physically happen. In order to maintain this flow rate, the minimum possible specific energy in the flow has to be 0.8 meters. So we can't physically have 0.3 meters of specific energy and maintain our flow rate. So what we're gonna to have to do is shift the offset backwards, we're going to have to keep the same delta Z of 1.6 meters because the, the size of the obstruction isn't changing, but we need to shift the offset back so that the min minimum specific energy is not going below 0.8. So if we draw a new line where the line finishes at our minimum specific energy level and our delta Z is still equal to 1.6, then we get a new specific energy level at point number one of 2.4 meters. So what that basically means is that what we've got here is a situation where we've basically had to force the upstream flow depth to increase so that over the weir, we're not exceeding the minimum specific energy level. So what we're, what's gonna happen now is, 
our upstream flow depth is now going to increase to a new level in order to leave enough specific energy in reserve so that we're not going to drop below the minimum specific energy over this weir. So we're going to have a new upstream flow depth of 2.4 metres. So we've kept that delta Z the same, but we've, we've had to ensure that it's not dropping below the minimum specific energy level, which gives us a new specific energy level upstream because we've forced the flow depth upstream to increase. And that flow depth upstream has increased to 2.4 meters. So now we can see that at the point over our obstruction, our flow depth is now gonna be at the minimum specific energy level and it's going to be at the critical flow depth. So over our obstruction, our flow depth is going to be 0.5, which is the critical flow depth. So this depth here, Y2, is going to be the critical flow depth, which is 0.5 meters. And then our final depth, Yc, Y3, is going to be the alternate flow depth down here. The reason for that is because we've hit the critical flow depth over the weir, we're going to transition from subcritical to supercritical flow. So we're going to keep on going down from that first flow depth. We go through the critical flow depth. So over the weir, the flow is at critical flow depth. Because we've hit critical flow depth, that means the flow is transitioning from subcritical to supercritical. So our downstream flow depth is going to be supercritical and it's going to be at this level here. So what we've actually got here is a situation where Y1 has had to change, Y1 has had to increase to 2.4 meters because we need to maintain the critical flow depth over the weir because we can't drop below the minimum energy level. Y2 is the critical flow depth and our downstream Y3 going to be 0.2 meters. So Y2 over the weir is the critical flow depth and Y3 is going to be the alternate flow depth at our new initial specific energy level and there's no obstruction because we've gone through the critical flow depth so our flow has transitioned from subcritical to supercritical. So our final flow profile is going to start at 2.4 it's going to decrease to the critical flow depth over the obstruction and then after the obstruction it's going to be supercritical flow at a flow depth of 0.2 metres.